Again, it's all centred from water, the revering of water and the importance of water within the universe. So water occurs as a result of these supernova explosions within space. Huge events. But what quantum physicists have identified is that there's plasma occurring between the hydrogen and oxygen molecule, electromagnetic plasma, which they're calling longitudinal electromagnetic waves. And I'll explain to you how exciting that is, how timely, and how it can literally change humanity, and the ancients always knew this. So the water comes into our atmosphere as a result of these comets bringing new consciousness into our world, into our landscape, mostly arriving as morning dew. This is uh, the main asteroid belt in our solar system. There was another planet that was identified and it exploded. This asteroid belt has uh, been always known to the ancients around the globe. The Mayan refer to this as Quetzalcoatl and also to Venus as the same. These are important deities, sky deities, because this, this solar system as we know it has not remained static. It's forever changing just like we are, throughout time. But this water and these laws hold the law of things like the impacts of asteroids, the transit of comets, the arrival of the man in the blue crystal, and the significance that water has to all of these things. This is a beautiful painting that was done by Ainsley Roberts in the 1950s and it's um, of the Seven Sisters Lakes in South Australia and the waters from space, God from God. So in the law we say we all come from the eye of the emu, which is the Big Bang. So this is the Colsac Nebula here. This is the Southern Cross and the two pointers, the Southern Cross and the two pointers. We all come from the West that this explosion occurred in this part of the galaxy that created our solar system. This is within their law, within their culture. Most of our uh, Western Hemisphere cultures only go back you know, a couple of thousand years. These guys go back to the creation of the galaxy. <coughs> Interestingly, China launched a probe about three years, four years ago, it is now, that's right, 2009, um, to go and search for the origin of the galaxy of this solar system and they sent it there and it's due to arrive now. <laughs> so it's quite timely allowing this material to be talked about. So this emu is often seen this in the petroglyphs. This is it in a portion of the Milky Way. It's by no means the full Milky Way. It's just part of it. Now these um, dust clouds or shadows in the Milky Way have been referred to as black holes in the past but they're not, they go in the infinite and you open up into, uh, well they're finding huge amounts of water in space. Actually NASA released papers two years ago to show that um, 40 tonnes of water bombards this planet every year. Water doesn't originate from this planet, it comes from the sky. The elders always knew that. This is our local emu dreaming. A big rock stands in the sea six miles from Byron Bay. A man called Nuthangali made that rock. Nuthangali is our father. He's the father of the whole world. He's the man we've got to be afraid of and no matter what we do wrong or where we do it, he'll know. And no man has seen him. Nuthangali had a cave in the rock. And after he made the rock, he told the four fairy women, Gilamavel, to stay there. Then he travelled over the mountains with his dog, Karan. He had a walking stick, and when he put the stick into the ground, he left behind a stone like a basin. And as he travelled, he left the bean trees, and he named the different places on his journey. He named Woodenbong, Nathambang. Nuthangali has big rocks out in the Bugor, the sea, where he lives today, out in the caves in the sea. Nuthangali had four daughters and one son, and his son is called Yabarain. This was recorded in the 1950s as part of the civil rights movement which was then occurring because up until that age our, our traditional owners in this country were classified under the National Parks Act until 1967. In order to overthrow that grave 
and horrible so that's classification they talked about their law the elders got together for the first time and this was recorded in the 1950s most of the Buddhas I'll show you today were recorded in the 1950s and what you will see within them is science is just starting to realize that they were right science is just catching up only now so this was recorded from Mrs. Charlotte Williams, Yarbarain, Mount Warning, and the four fairy emu women is not something that is just static to hear these four fairy emu women. You can go down to the Alps, those fairy emus, they make the sexes. Fairy emu wrens, tiny little birds. These are the bird tribes here. There's three tribal nations, types of nations within Australia. These are the bird tribes. Granny Charlotte Williams, who is the grandmother of these people, was an amazing woman. She was the great granddaughter of King Brown of Wollumba. This old man was relocated from his ancestral lands to Baramba, which is Sherberg, now known as Sherberg in southeast Queensland. And um, they did that, they would relocate people was part of the dispersal processes and the fragmentation. So for this, for the, this law to survive, it went underground.